Okay, welcome back, everyone. Thanks for tuning in again. Thanks for listening to Two Frat Boys, Build a Brand, Sell It, then Go on a 16-Year Ride. This is our story. My name is Anthony Aldano. And I'm Jesus Diaz. All right, and we're up to episode two, season one. We are finally at the 2000 show of the second annual Latino Greek Summer Step and Stroll Show. Right, Jesus? Yeah, no, I love this this episode. I, I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to really walking through this year because it was it was definitely a momentous year for the show, for, for our, our team, for our business as, as, as a starting point. Or, or for me, it was a starting point, but still it was part of the ride. But yeah. Right, right, right. right. So here we go. So basically the date of the event was July 29th, 2000, and the show started at 12 p.m. noon. So uh, that's pretty early again. And I actually have the flyer for, I don't know if the glare. Yeah, I could Latino see it. Greek, Latino Greek second annual summer step and show show, bigger, better, and hotter. And Why I did think, you use uh, uh, peppers there? It was a clip art image that happened to be available that I was you now in my search, in my search screen. Nice. Uh, Columbia University, Alfred Lerner Auditorium. Nice. Yeah, the venue was much upgraded for those who listened to the first episode and heard how inadequate the space was. Yeah. Uh, you guys definitely did a better job of locating a step show venue. Yeah, well, we, we basically just uh, leaned on our, our network at, and actually shout out to Neta, uh, Lambda Pi Upsilon rent reserve the uh venue for us because they were a, a you know a functioning chapter on campus so we were luckily enough and i don't think we got i don't think we paid anything i don't remember we may have paid a little bit and i think the price was five dollars at the door do you remember that yeah it was it was a low low price of entry yeah that was the cheapest show other than the free one in 99 that was the cheapest show we, we we've ever done that's amazing. It's funny how like as, as the business grew, our venue expense always grew and we didn't stay stay kind of like constrained to that mentality of like pay as little as possible. That, that's a great point. And you know what, before we start on 2000, let's go back and mention in the 99 show all the teams that we didn't have the data on. So we're going to name the participants of all the 90 from our 99 show. It was in alphabetical order. Alpha Roll Lambda Sorority, Alianza de Raices Latinas, Hermandad de Sigma Yota Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Lambda Latina, Lambda Upsilon Lambda Fraternity, Lambda Pi Upsilon Latinas Poderosas Unidas, Lambda Phi, sorry, Lambda Theta Phi Latin Fraternity, Latinas Promoviendo Comunidad, Lambda Pi Chi Sorority Inc., Omega Phi Beta Sorority, Omega Phi Chi Sorority, Sigma Lambda Beta International Fraternity, Sigma Lambda Upsilon Sanitas Latinas Unidas Sorority. Uh, do you want to go over 2000, Jesus? Yeah. So in the 2000 show, um, the participating org organizations there were uh, Alpha Rho Lambda, Lambda Upsilon Lambda, Lambda Pi Upsilon, Lambda Sigma Upsilon, uh, Lambda Pi Chi, Latino America Unida, Lambda Alpha Upsilon Fraternity. Uh, Mu Sigma Upsilon Sorority, Omega Phi Beta Sorority, and Sigma Lambda Beta International Fraternity, and then uh, Señoritas Latinas Unidas Sigma Lambda Upsilon Sorority. You're saying, you're saying those names with so much respect. I hear it in your in your voice. A lot of respect. Put some respect on my name. Um, so yeah, those were the, 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 the teams. And so when, like I mentioned in episode one, basically, after at the end of, of of the first show in Roberto Clemente State Park, Neta was irate at me for due cause. Uh, you know, I, you know, LUL single handedly tanked the first show, disrespected everybody for no reason whatsoever. Uh, and you know, turn, turned it, you know, whatever. All right. So after that, me and Netta had to kind of make make amends and I had to kind of, uh, you know, I guess I apologize. You know, I should have apologized if I hadn't. But um, so we were able to get the, the venue and then we started, we go at it again. You know, we figure out that uh, 
it, it, we should do it again. Uh, you know, we had a good turnout the first hand, the first time. And, and, and as you say, I mean, um, you know, we just went at it, reached out to teams again. And as you mentioned, I think we had maybe a few more teams than uh, the 99 show. It was, it was about equal. 10, one, two, three. Yeah, it was 10. 10 teams in 99, 10 teams in 2000. So the 2000 show was not a competition. Uh, it was just a, an exhibition. Uh, but it's, it's a shame for uh, LUL because that was like one of their best performances ever, I think, in any of our shows. Uh, I'm, I'm, what do you say to that? Yeah, and, and I guess to, to, to highlight the venue format, you know, it was two tiers of, of seating, like an upper deck and then the lower deck. And I remember the presence of LUL in the crowd. So not only was their show on point, but also they had a lot of brothers there. So we made so much noise and we were, you know, I think it just amplified what they were doing on stage, but there were a lot of other great shows. Like I'm not just, you know, being self-serving here, I think, but LUL definitely, I think stood out on that format. Had it, had it been a competition, they, they may have won that show possibly. Unfortunately for them. Fair to um, say. Right, right, right. Um, what, what was I going to say about that second show, LUL? Well, let me, let me step in and say, yeah. you know, I was part of the LUL step team in 99, but in 2000, I, I really kind of moved away from the stepping. It really was taking up a lot of time in my schedule, and I just couldn't uh, compromise or sacrifice that much time this year. So I was more of a spectator. I was not organizing the show. Um, and, and Anthony and I, at, at that point, we had some personal rifts <laughs> Uh, between us it was it was really um more uh chapter based uh conflict but um it wasn't it wasn't you know it wasn't uh what's the word but it was a yin yang then at that moment right. but i just still wanted to take part and attend the show got it um so tell me what do you how should i how do you want to lay out how much of the pre-show should we talk about before oh, we yeah, get into yeah. it? I mean, I, I'm, I'm curious, because uh, I don't think I know this story, but how did you connect with um, Tony Martinez and, and who was he in respect to the show and, and in respect to... Right. So I guess back in those days, in 2000, the website Latin Flava, F, uh, latinflava.com was really popular. They had gotten some funding from someone. Tony Martinez was a Kappa, a Peruvian descent, but he was a Kappa from Syracuse. And I believe Ruben Rodriguez, right, the LUL president, were, they were friends. And I think he introduced us. Oh, wow. I, I didn't know that. And Kappa Alpha know. Psi, which is an African American fraternity. Right. Just a... right, right, right. Tony Martinez was a Kappa Alpha Psi from Syracuse. So Ruben um, made the introduction, and then you carried. I guess the dialogue, right? Yeah. So basically what happened was that um, somehow Ruben, you know, introduced me to him and I guess the, 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 you know, the show had, um, I reached, I talked to him about the show and um, I invited him to the 2000 show. I think he was there, right? He was there. And then after the show, they do us the favor of editing and cutting it up and taking it from, However, we recorded it and then we put it into VHS tapes and then we started selling VHS tapes after the show, but we can get, get into that later. But yeah, basically I was introduced to, to Tony and then Tony ends up giving us some pretty good advice, you and I, once we start competing directly with latinogreeks.com. Yeah. And, and I remember awesome. just, to, awesome kind of, for them. just well, to, move, to move forward a bit and then come back. Um, I remember being at the show and watching the Latin Flavor team because they had a camera uh, on site and they were recording the, the show. I, I, remember seeing, remember that. I remember seeing that and I was just like, wow, this thing is getting big. I'm like, there's cameras on this thing. Like it, it was, it was yeah. at that time for us, it was unknowable where this was going, but you could tell that it was getting bigger. It wasn't at a gym with 300 people. It was now 900 plus in a you know, beautiful venue. So really right, exciting right, right. kind of growth uh, story there. Yeah, yeah. So since, since, you, since you already mentioned it, yeah, let, let's, let's talk about the attendance. So basically, you know, on the day of the show, again, there's no way of predicting how many people were coming. We weren't pre-selling tickets. It was all buy tickets at the door. 
Um, and then once the show starts, like you said, you, you say that I, I kept going outside. A very, a very poor use of my time as an organizer of a show when I'm running out to the, to the lobby to see how many people are in line. That's not professionalism at its best. And what do you, what do you, what do you, th like, what are you thinking as you come outside and you see the line? Because the way it, it's a New York City block, it's a 116th right. and Broadway. And so what happens is the line starts forming on 116, I'm sorry, on Broadway, and then it cuts back around 116. So it, it's now forming around the corner. What are your thoughts as the organizer and as you're seeing this? Yeah, I mean, I know I was excited. I was, I was happy. Uh, I, I didn't know the, the, the exact number, but I do remember a point during the show, or it just could have been before the show where I was, it's like you said, it's two, two decks. The top deck is a half deck you know fixed seating and then the bottom deck is uh fold up chairs and i remember you know both things were full they look pretty full to me and in the end we find out there are about 900 people there but i remember when i was standing in front i was at the stage facing the crowd looking out and i thought man this this is it there's something here like i that's when like the light bulb like it was just very evident you know very obvious you have a an auditorium full of people there's in, in need so we were filling a void we filled a void obviously right so you know, people show up we charge five bucks we probably lose money on this event if it was uh if we were if we were you know honest we lost money we probably lost money but like you said and then when you say like latin flavor it looked like that's all like in, you know in the real world like that's all show that's all fluff because if you're not paying hard money as a sponsor to be like, you're not helping these business guys stay in business. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They, they were definitely, uh, because uh, as you mentioned, they had raised money. They were a social media site, early stages of Latinos in college. And so it's definitely on target for them as an event, but they didn't right. pay, pay money. I mean, maybe they paid the, for the videographer, but you know, that wasn't coming to you. Um, and, and, and just right, to, right. This is a side note. I did want to share a story that I think you remember it, where um, I was outside waiting in line. So I was just a normal person, normal spectator for this event. I remember beforehand the Puerto Rican Day Parade, which was a month prior in June. And again, you and Neta and Annette were out there marketing, talking to the teams. And and I just felt like there was something like you, you could feel it in the air that this was getting bigger because of you know, not only the teams involved, but like the, the marketing, because you did, even though you didn't sell tickets pre-show, I do remember getting so many emails about like, hey, are you coming? Are you taking part in the second annual Latino Greek Summer Step and Stroll show? And it definitely was getting bigger. So, um, but, but uh, oh, sorry, I, I didn't finish the story. So I'm waiting in line in that long line that's cutting around the corner. Anthony comes out, you know, pops out, like pops out a door, and then he notices that I'm online. And so, as I mentioned earlier, because we had a rift, I didn't realize that, you know, he was still going to be very friendly and cordial to me. And he, he, he couldn't understand why I was, why I was waiting in line. So he pulled me in without having to pay. And, and I came into the show and I remember watching during the show and thinking to myself, man, this guy is very, uh, you know, like he, he's, he's got a short memory for like, you know, any tension, like, because he was, very forgiving and, and brought me back in without having to pay. And I was, I was impressed by that. You know, I thought, wow, this guy is, you know, he's not holding a grudge against me for any kind of disagreements we had. And I appreciated that a lot. And I think that moment for me, like it stands out to this day because it was, it was definitely, you know, almost like a reconnection because we were very good friends, you know, outside of the shows. And I think it just reminded me that he's a cool cat who I should, you know, be all right. With. so anyway sorry <laughs> no that's a great story and i'm glad you mentioned it but like i totally don't even remember any i i vague when you mentioned i vaguely remembered yeah like taking bringing you from the outside in but i don't remember the beef that you say we had and I, I believe you but i'm glad that it's you know it uh it stands out and i'm glad that it was an example i guess of who i am in some ways um, so no, that's, that's an awesome, awesome story. Uh, all right. So where should we go next? I mean, who, do you remember who emceed the show or who did you guys get to? It wasn't me. I, I know that. Um, 
But you were backstage. You're, you're backstage yeah. with the teams, right? You were organizing. Yeah. Oh, let, was, let's talk about. Do, do you remember the team meeting? Because I know Colombia has that area that you could kind of group sixty plus. I I don't remember oh. a team meeting. The only thing I remember is being backstage and LUL being very happy and excited, and uh, they had a funny character by the name of Henry Vallejo, who was oh, like yeah. su super popular. He has a great personality, and uh, they, they, everyone just always gravitated around him. Yeah, the Vallejo brothers, uh, and his brother Alfred, who is also sure. very, very popular, and uh, Jason Rosario. That team was stacked. Eddie Garcia, I remember the group that. Eddie Garcia. Luis Ortiz. Right. So I can't tell you if there was. I, I doubt there was some official pre thing. I, I may have said like, were you backstage? Well, no, I, I wasn't part. Like I was as a spectator of this show but but before you jump in I, I do want to say if there's anyone listening that was backstage for that 2000 show i know several of you will be on you know listening because we're going to share this out but please we'd love to hear your perspective uh, up to what the yeah. show was and how you felt about the experience our email is greekster.tv at gmail for now so you can email us there i do remember backstage that i may have said something like uh Good luck to everyone. Like I may have said, had like a little short, maybe. I don't even. I yeah. couldn't even tell you, like if I really did or I didn't. Um, but yeah. Uh, do, do so, uh, Jesus. I'm glad that you you were an audience member. What? Tell me what teams do you remember uh, from the list that you read about who was there? Yeah, yeah. I I, I very much remember uh, LSU because I thought they were. Um, Lambda Sigma Upsilon, they were LUL's biggest competition. They were using machetes, which was very unique to their organization. Um, and they were cutting up steps. Like, I remember, well, years later, there's one of the steppers who I, or, or two of the team members that I remember very distinctly, Omar uh, Tomas Gomez was part of that group. Uh, Mike Dave, who later went on to MC some of the shows, was also part of that group. It was, it was a good group of guys, and uh, they were very 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 audience friendly like i know the women I, I forget what they did but i know the women reacted to it in a certain kind of way uh, i think they had their underwear their oh the guys. thongs that's right they showed I their thongs, that. which yeah. i got we got in trouble for because someone was upset about that because of the kids in the audience oh yeah 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 but the girls I remember loved it. you know the yeah girls the loved girls it. loved it but i remember somehow me taking uh crap for it for some reason i'm like like, yeah, oh, I think someone was like, a... how can you let this happen? I'm like, how how am I supposed to stop someone, you know? Yeah, but uh, I think, but yeah. yeah, I think for, and, and also I remember um, LAU from the fraternity side because Starkey Bibb was on that team. Um, and I, I they, they had a, um, I don't know how to describe it, but they had a very unique um, flavor. It felt very Dominican, you know, like like myself. Like they had merengue. I think they, they, were, had, I think they were all Dominican then. Uh, yeah, yeah they had merengue. They were really doing something different from a musical standpoint. Yeah. So I thought that was good. And then um, from the sororities, um, I do I feel like, well, I, I know Omega Phi Beta always stood out to me. Like I thought they were a great team. I thought they were very, like if it would have been a competition, they would have probably won that year because they had, you know, Stepmaster. It's, it's uh, interesting. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, wait, am I unmuted? Yeah. It's interesting because um, was this the show that Lambda Pi Chi used the uh, oh yeah that symphony that, yes. that symphony song, but then it goes into yes. yeah. So for me, that was the best performance sorority performance. I don't even remember Mango Phi Beta. Yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I no, mean, no, granted, right. I could have been busy and yeah. Like, so I don't know. Right. I didn't watch Omega Phi Beta. Lana Pi Kai won that show, right? I, no, well, I, I, so in all fairness, that was awesome. What they did with the symphony and they pretended they had violins and they were yeah. playing. No, but their music. stepping was on point back then. The stepping was definitely on point, but they still had, um, it was, it, it, so it, in, in a nice way to say it is they didn't, you know, like, there were moments of that show where they weren't in sync with each other. Like there were, mm. there was some kind of out of sync, but Omega Phi Beta, for me, for me personally, I think they they won that one or they would have won if it was a competition. They had, okay. they had and the I'm synchronization gonna... that was just incredible. So 
can't take anything away from you know the work they put in there. I am going. So then, listen. I didn't watch every all every, all the shows. So if you say Omega Phi Beta should have won, then yeah. that's uh that's but, fine but with me. It's so just my opinion. Not, obviously, everyone has an opinion, and I think. Um, but but to to say that Landa Pike High stood out for sure. They were. I want to give an honorable people. mention then to Landa Pike High sorority, and the point person in those days was Nicole Dominici. Was she? She was involved from the start. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nicole. Right. She was on. She was on stage on that on that stage. Nicole Dominici. Yeah. She was a good person to work. Here's why I, I loved. I liked Nicole. I, I wouldn't yeah. say I loved her because she. I she loved was, her. She, I loved her. She was great. Some, sometimes <laughs> she was very uh all like like a good leader. She was protecting her org and she was um looking out for their best organization. My daughter told me it's, or, it's said pronounced organization. Okay. Her, she was always looking out for her organization. And um, like, like any good leader, they, she wanted to take care of her team and made sure that they had the, they were in the best position to win. But yeah. And, and it could and be annoying all... to an organizer, uh, you know, uh, having someone, you know, in your ear complaining all the time. Yeah. But like you but, said, um, yeah. she, she actually, you know, again, I know we'll get to this in a future episode, but like she was the brainchild of our eventual judging rules and how to mm -hmm. modify them so that it was a much better scoring system for all teams where, you know, we went to like, well, let's talk about that because how, how, why do you, how do you, why do you remember that? And when, when did that happen? She was, she came into our, our offices. So again, we were acquired. Again, so, so to my point, I mean, yeah, we are, we are fast forwarding a lot. We, we weren't acquired in 2000 though. No, no, we, no, no, no. It was, it was later than that. But after okay. we were acquired, we had office space. And I remember Nicole coming into the office that day, just, uh, she may have been coming there to, you know, make sure that the rules were a certain way or, or, or <laughs> make sure we had it on point because she worked right around the corner from, it was 38th street and sixth Avenue or seventh Avenue. Um, and uh, I remember she came to our office for a visit. And then at the end of the visit, she stopped by and was was sitting in a chair. You know, we were just we were just chatting. And she was just what like, year was oh. this? What year would you, would you say this is? I think it was 04. It might have been 03. Um, but she was just sitting there chatting with me. And, and she said, she said, have you thought about doing judging this way where you because we had 100 percent Greek judges initially. She's like, let's do 50-50, where it's 50% great judges, 50% uh, dance and, and choreography experts. And so that's where we eventually kind of landed. And that ended up working well because, and we'll talk about this in future episodes and, and we'll come back to Columbia now, but um, that eventually helped eliminate a lot of the post-show frustrations with how the events were being judged. So. Uh, but we're skipping way ahead, so let's yeah. let's come back to Learner Hall. Right. And, uh, well, hold on. Let me just just before yeah. we go back. Yeah. But well, uh, like you said, so you you touched upon it in episode one, where we we were always trying to be better and do better. So I, what you just said reminds me that we were always always trying to improve. Like after every show, we were talking to everyone, getting everyone's complaints. And for figuring out, all right, how can we improve this? So then, yeah, like like you had taken Nicole's suggestion. It was a great suggestion. We're all good. We're all we're all ears for good suggestions and the ways to improve. I it was funny when we were. Uh, I was trying to collect some data for for our this podcast. I saw an email where we we were sending out surveys after the show on their experience and what it was an actual a survey monkey link on like questions. I, I, the questions were I, I didn't see the questions, but that takes, you know, that's pretty cool for us to have been so, you know, uh, we, I think we, it shows that we cared a lot about the show. And I, I hope all the teams that have participated in the past and we weren't the only show they participated in, but maybe now in retrospect, they can be like them. Maybe these, these were the best shows to be in because our shows were the best shows to be in because we, A, we listened, we care. We always try to elevate it to the next level the next year and always do better. Yeah, and to um to kind of wrap that up and, and bring us back, uh, we we um we I think after that show, uh, serious about stepping became like a tagline that was associated with the website or the email marketing because I remember 
to that point about being very detail oriented, that was you know something we had thought about, and it just it just I just remembered it. But um, yeah, at the show itself, I think that um, to Ed's point about detail, um, there was you know again now nine hundred people, um, a lot of organizations, a lot of chanting at each other in the crowd. So like from a crowd perspective, I remember seeing the brothers of LUL, even though. It has to be a unity show on stage. Like I remember the brothers of LUL in the crowd were chanting across at LAU and at, at Lendoff Hope Salon. They were chanting some harsh chants. And then even the sororities got into it where S Sigma Lambda Upsalon, Upsalon, SLU was chanting, I think at the Pai Kai's Lambda Pai Kai. And it was it was a it was a dynamic where I was worried that something was gonna break out security wise, like and I don't know that you were staffed. Do you remember? No, like, we, we did it. No, I remember. I remember we had to pay for security. Columbia, you have to pay. I mean, uh, this is a security guard. They had no gun. Yeah, they, yeah. Need a gun. Like, they weren't going to stop a raging, a raging audience. But yeah. Right, 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 right. All right. So getting back to the show, what, 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 what areas of the show should we move on to, Jesus? Well, um, I think we can talk about the, so we talked about UMC, the, the performances that stood out, the staffing, the role players. Uh, you put yeah. Pacheco, I think, at the door. The, to manage yeah, the Robert team. Pacheco was heavily involved. He's a good friend of ours who was very instrumental in helping us execute. And he was, a, you know, a, you know, a, a person that was helping us a lot. So I want to thank sure. Rob for stuff. Sure. So let, let's jump into the show then. Um, and we talked about the performances that that were stood out for us. Um, do you remember, like, backstage? Like, I know Daniel Cleland was a part of Alpha Rho. Um, yeah. Nicole Dominici, as you mentioned. Were there any other teams that, like, uh, Mu Sigma Upsilon had um, Leah K Kirai? Yes. Um, who was back there? Uh, Jess, Jess Morales in, you know, Mega 5 Beta. Yes. yes. Um, Sigma on the Beta had, uh, who was the, do you remember the coordinate? It was, there's a tall guy oh yeah 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 david no i know what you're talking about yeah he was tall he was dating Ryan? one of the um he was dating yes. uh or he married a, a, a sorority sister yes um i know i know the guy i don't remember his name though yeah i see i know his tall bald guy but anyway he's a nice SLU, guy though slu who was who was their step mistress thing? um was it um melanie maldonado so uh, bigger, better, hotter. I think the show lived up to its name, right? Yeah, no, for sure. And that was just, you know, hoping that that it'd be a success. And 100 people is pretty legit. That's like a, what, 300% increase in uh, uh, audience. That, you I mean, that's a very difficult thing to reach, you know, 300% increase for uh, all the business people out there. Um, and I think, so, yeah, put, I mean. Oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, no. No, I was just gonna say, I think it put organizations on notice that this is a show you have to participate in because if you don't, you lose out on that marketing opportunity. Because there was not only fraternity and sorority people in the crowd, there were a lot of interests. So everybody, I remember Lambda Pai Kai marched in a line and they stood them against the wall during the show. And so um, it, it was it was ruckus. I mean, <laughs> the show was, you know, like, like we were talking about, the performances were great, but then you've got lines marching into the show which I don't think security was ready for. And then, you know, they're, they're doing their own like little um, salute or chant to their sisters on the side. And which decided, sorority was it that, that brought their line in? Lambda Pai Kai. They brought it, I forget what they called their line, but, and someone please listening to this, uh, send us a note, remind us, but, um, but they marched in their sisters. They did a little salute during the show and security was going nuts because I remember it was a fire hazard because they were literally in one of the, um, open uh, corridors that would have enabled people to get out if there was a fire. So uh, security was going nuts. They didn't know what was happening. They didn't know this was a part of the event. They thought it was some outside thing. And um, it, it was just, it was organized chaos, if you will, at the moment, um, what was happening at the venue. And I remember, again, the MC having to kind of alert the crowd to stay you you know keep unity keep unity alive was it know, renata mcneil no 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 no. that at a later event it was renata but there was another um uh well, what do you call it there was another uh mc that stepped out it was just like 
we need to maintain unity here. We can't, you know, we can't, we're, we're all Latino Greek organizations, yada, yada, yada. Was it MC Gabe maybe? Was Gabe at that point? No. But there was definitely an MC who stepped out and kind of had to calm us all down because the, the, the temperature was getting a bit warmer in the crowd than, than you probably wanted. Wow. 